Yeah, Larry, I was just wondering about your experience here so far coming from Jacksonville and um, just your you've been working nickel linebacker, did some safety today. Just talk about that adventure also. It's been great. The transition has been great. My teammates has helped me a lot, the transition. And it's just been a great time, a great switch. Did you uh, did you think you'd be playing all these different positions when you got here? I'm used to kind of moving around a little bit. So wherever I can help the team at, that's where I'm best at. You think you opened some eyes with your testing numbers? I mean, I saw 40.8 inch vert, 10.9 broad jump. You think you surprised a lot of people? No, I definitely do. I knew what I could do. I'm just glad to prove it and show, show everyone else. Yeah, that's the same question for you. What's it been like playing a lot of center and then in this camp, some guard too, you know? It's been great. I played, you know, obviously, back at Tennessee, I played guard and center. Um, but being able to really focus down on one position and kind of hone in specifically on that, it's been great. But obviously, you know, you got to do what you got to do for the team. And being able to, to go back and forth and be able to do that has been a, a good opportunity for me to obviously learn left guard again and help the team as much as possible. But overall, it's been fantastic being able to be under Coach Mateos and Coach Pittman uh, two of the greats, obviously Coach Pittman being a, a legendary offensive line coach and uh, Coach Mateos making a huge name for himself and will go down as one of the greats, in my opinion. It's been something that's been unbelievable for me. Uh, I never thought I'd be able to be in this situation with them and extremely blessed and thankful for the knowledge that I'm able to get from them at uh, all the positions and aspects. If you guys could both address this, um, Coach Pittman was in here with us yesterday and said, like, the grind will continue through Monday, but it looks like maybe he back, they backed off a little bit today. How has camp been in terms of being a grind and tough? And then what was today uh, maybe a little bit of relief? I wouldn't say more of a relief. It's more of some days are more physical, some days are more mental, but the grind is always on every single day. So it may be more of a mental grind some days, more of a physical grind some days, but it's always 100% on. Exactly what Larry said. It, it, not, we're never taking the grind off. It's just some days we're focusing on technique, and then other days we're focusing on mental toughness and physical toughness. And today was one of those days where we take a load off of our body after a big day like yesterday and allow our bodies to you know, rejuvenate and uh, heal a little bit more, but allowing our minds to be crisper and working on technique and being quicker and, it's, and, and things like that. As just what have you seen? You know, we've seen a Marion work with uh, kind of the left guard a lot the, this week at camp. What have you seen from him and, and his development, just kind of working right next to him when you're at center? Uh, he's had a fantastic camp. He, he's truly been unbelievable. He has uh, really bought in, had great effort, great execution, and he's someone that you, you trust playing next to. And a, a big thing for me is, you know, all, all these teams uh, and all these players are talking about depth and how oh, we're, we're lacking this, lacking that. That's something that I don't feel like we have a problem with here. I, I feel like we have a, a room of guys that all want to win, all want to play, and are all bought in and all can play at a very high level. And E is a great example of that, being able to fill a position that needed to be filled and didn't ask any questions, didn't bat an eye, just came in and filled it uh, beyond expectations expectations and extremely proud of him and what everyone's done so far this camp and and larry you know you've been working a different position so has uh Danico, anthony too just can you tell is there anything different about this defense with how many versatile guys you have maybe compared to where were you doing at jacksonville state or just what you've seen throughout your college football career one thing i'll definitely say is like the whole secondary it's not like anybody just locked in or only could play one position everybody's pretty versatile so wherever we need help at or like any rotation that needs to be done we all could get that job done yeah, Edison, you you you've worked your left guard yourself, so Sandy Marion over there. Well, what is it technically, or what what do you like about his game over there? I would just say he he does a great job with fits uh, when we're working, you know, singles and A's and uh, different blocks like that. He is uh, quick off the ball, gets a good fit, you know, chases the crease and allows me to either get off or take over a block. Uh, he just plays fast and plays hard. And he's someone that, you know, I don't have to think about, will he know what to do? Will I uh, have to be slower off of this block to kind of make up for something he's lacking? I don't feel any of that whatsoever. I, I trust him and know that he's going to play ball every time I get down and snap that ball. So that's something that, that you got to have with everyone. And he does a great job uh, coming and just 
doing a great job with everything he does and allows me to play fast and play hard. You talked about the depth in the room. You know, Eric was in here the other day saying, you know, he's not afraid. To, obviously, he got five stars, but he's not afraid to play, you know, other guys if if they've earned it. How, how do you feel about that as, as a starter? And um, a, lot, a lot of new guys like yourself in that room, how, how do you just feel like the cohesion is, is going along? Well, with the cohesion itself, the, the 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 team, or at least the offensive line chemistry in the room is something that I'd, I'd never been a part of before. I haven't been a part of a group this tight and this close ever in really any sport that I've ever played. I, I think that uh, we have one of the the best you know chemistry rooms in in the country. We all get along. We all do everything together, and that really helps uh, when we're we're playing ball, and it helps with the the depth as well because we we trust each other. And, you know, like I said, I don't think we have a problem with depth at all. Everyone wants to play. Everyone is bought in and everyone trusts each other. And, uh, yeah, I, I can't say anything bad about, you know, our chemistry at all. We really just love each other. And it's great to be a part of that. And back to your question with the uh, what do I feel about the depth problem or the depth question is, you know, it's great for us. You know, the defensive line gets to sub and change in a game and they get to come in fresh if we have the opportunity to be able to get some fresh guys in as well and they've earned that opportunity to play why not you know it's better for us it gives us time to you know get a breather and it gives other guys an opportunity to go out and play ball i feel like some schools don't really give people that opportunity once you're a two you don't really get to play at all you just practice 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 you maybe get in late in the fourth quarter but being able to give guys a chance to go out there and play ball you know some guys are practice guys some guys are game guys so they could go out there and have a fantastic game and you'd really never know unless you gave them a shot to go out there so there's a lot of benefit and opportunity for us being able to rotate guys and have depth, which we do have. Larry, what position did you play in high school? What were you recruited out uh, at Jacksonville state and what all did you do at Jacksonville state? Kind of what's your position evolution there? So I originally started out, I played receiver coming out of high school, but I ended up going on a walk on at Jacksonville state at a uh, nickel. And then I kind of transitioned and started playing on some safety a little bit. And then that's when they could kind of just see my versatility. So ever since then, I've just kind of been versatile, hybrid, and a little bit of everything. Does one position feel more natural to you than others, or does it, you don't, you don't mind the, the versatility? I don't mind the versatility at all. Thank you for the question. Wherever I'm best fit at, wherever I can help my team at, that's where I feel best at. So you were kind of a light bloomer, I guess. Does, what, do, what do you think was the reason um, – that you went the walk-on path at Jacksonville State? The reason that I um, walked on at Jacksonville State, I uh, sustained an injury my uh, my senior year of high school. So I kind of was like a late bloomer in that process, kind of fell late in that recruiting process. So kind of got overlooked a little bit. But Jacksonville State came in late, and then I just kind of took that grind path that we were just talking about earlier and just showed, showed what I could do. Have you worked at safety aside from today um, at Arkansas? Yes, sir, I have. We, that was just our first time to see you there. What, what position were you lined up at uh, when you had the interception yesterday, and what what developed on that play? Uh, I was at boundary safety, and it's just something we kind of been harping on and just looking at, just reading the RPO and kind of just making a play from there. You remember like what the who threw it and and who you were defending? Um, it was Malachi, Malachi, and we were that's who that's who threw the uh, interception. Trey just snagged my question. I was going to ask you about the pick. But what about overall getting eight yesterday? That's a pretty big number. What did you think, um, you know, how the how the defense played? We, I, think we played I think we started out great. We played great. It's just something we've been harping on. Because the first scrimmage, I feel like we kind of started a little bit slow. So that's something we've been – you can't go into games, these big-time games starting out slow. You got to come out the gate swinging. So that's something we kind of really harped on. And turnovers, you know, that's how you win games. Yeah, yes, and Sam told us yesterday the D-line had a – had a big day. Landon certainly did. Just what, what did you see from your vantage point on uh, maybe lessons to, to pick up from that? Yeah, I, I, yeah, things just kind of flipped from the first scrimmage. We The first scrimmage, we came out fast and um, hit them in the mouth hard really quick. And it kind of flipped yesterday. The defensive came out really fast and really aggressive. And we kind of came back in the back end. So it, it was great for us to, you know, feel that because I feel like we've had a great job of uh, as an offense coming out and starting off really fast. And we've kind of lacked a little bit of that finish. But I feel like yesterday, uh, 
the defense did a great job, you know, giving us some pushback at the beginning and uh, us having to finish and work hard to uh, get back some momentum back to us at the end. Well, Larry, you mentioned being a walk on Jacksonville State. Did you earn a scholarship there before you left or? Yes, sir, I did. And then what was it like, I mean, entering the transfer portal? I mean, you ended up at Arkansas. I assume there were other schools recruiting you. You, you missed out on that process coming out of high school. What was that process like? It kind of was just like a full circle moment because I didn't really get to receive it coming out of high school. So it was kind of like I felt new and like a rookie almost, like being like a full circle moment. So it kind of felt good. Larry said you had an injury in high school. You might have asked you what, what it was. Uh, it was a little knee injury. What, 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 do you remember which one it was? Um, no, sir. That's okay. Well, that means about not bothering you. No, it's not bothering me at all. And if you don't mind me asking, who, who all recruited you out of, out of the portal, and who else did you consider, and what, why Arkansas? Well, there's some SEC, SEC schools, a lot of schools from different conferences, but Arkansas just felt really good, felt like home. Coach T. Will and Coach Pitt it felt like a great fit. I know, you know, Jacksonville State, that, that that's a good, you know, program at that level, but how different is it? Um, playing at, at, at a program like that and, and at an SEC program? Like, what what, what, what what sort of things are, do you have here that maybe you didn't have there that, that are pretty nice? I would say some things. Just everything is just a lot bigger and, like, not even football-wise, but just facilities and resources. You get, like, a lot more resources that are greater. Hey, Addison, you mentioned earlier that, you know, Coach Mateos has the opportunity to go down as one of the great offensive line coaches. Just what makes him unique and, you know, special to work with? To me, it's just his approach to coaching us. He he looks at it. He wants us to be as prepared and as knowledgeable for, you know, the NFL as possible. He wants us to not just know what we do, what – the basic offensive line knowledge is he wants us to know everything. He wants us to know formations. He wants us to know like motions. He wants us to know, you know, what are the, uh, what, are, what's outside of the box, you know, are they doing like corner blitzes, safety shifts, all everything. He wants us to be able to know ball and it allows us to, you know, play more freely and we're not just focused on, you know, basic minor information, relying on other people to tell us what to do. We can make checks on our own. We can see things that are happening and allows us to, he calls it a, a, like playing ball. We're not just doing what we're supposed to do. You're just playing ball. If you see something and it, let's say you're supposed to go to this guy, but you see something and you feel something coming and then you're like, all right, now let's go this way. Let's check it to this. And it just allows you to play more free. And I feel like, him being able to make things easier to understand for us and not such an overload, overbearing, you know, knowledge dump is really what separates him. It's just easy to learn from him. And then Coach Pittman has also been with you all quite a bit out there when we've been watching you guys. Just what's it like having a head coach that's so knowledgeable on the offensive line? It's great. Like I said, having both of them together is a true powerhouse and offensive line knowledge. Uh, being able to work with Coach Pitt on the field is something that I, I'd always wanted to to do. I wanted to go to play uh, with him at Georgia. He recruited me out of high school, and I wanted to go play for him at Georgia. And then obviously he got the the head job here, and that ended up not working out. But now we're here, and I get to work with him and Coach Mateos and getting – both of their knowledge, they both have, you know, different ways they teach offensive line and being able to learn both sides of their knowledge, Coach Pitt's uh, just wisdom and techniques that he's gathered from over the years. And then Coach Mateos with his, his brain and his knowledge, it's something you couldn't you couldn't ask for any better, honestly. Addison, you mentioned the culture of this offensive line. Just how much of that has come from Fernando Carmona, and what does he add to the room? He adds so much to the room. He's just one of those guys that you can't not like him. Uh, I don't think there's anyone on the team that could say a bad thing about him. He gets along with everyone. He's everyone's friend. He wants uh, everyone to be as successful as they can. And, yeah, he, he's been a huge part of uh, our, our culture in, in the O-line room, but – Honestly, outside of that, he's been a huge part of the culture and the team as well. Uh, I feel like he just does a great job of, you know, bringing energy to every practice, uh, every day. And he's a fantastic leader, and he's really embodied, you know, that role. 
Addison, going back to the the Coach Pittman, Coach Mateos relationship, I think Mateos said the other day that he sometimes is a little bit more complex in the way he teaches things, and Coach Pittman has a way of simplifying things. Is that how it works? I mean, is there like it, you almost have to go through like a translator to see what Coach Mateos is saying, or how's that dynamic work? I would say he does it. it sometimes he'll, it'll come off very confusing, and he'll he'll catch himself and he'll uh, reword it, or he'll teach us something, and we might not get it right away and then a few days in he'll come back and uh you know reteach it to us a different way to where you know it it clicks our brain better and his whole thing is it, this was what was great for me because a lot of offensive line coaches they have you know this is what they coach this is how it's done and this is what you have to do he understands that everyone's different everyone learns different everyone plays different everyone's body's different so there are the the things that he expects us to do every play but he also has uh, it allows us to have the freedom to do things that work for us which i feel like a lot of people don't really do and that in itself really simplifies a lot of things for us because we're not having to go outside of our you know mental and physical limits to do things that don't work for us it allows us to you know be comfortable in something that we're good at doing and it allows us to play to our strengths. Uh, so I wouldn't say that we, there's really a, a translating situation there. Uh, they, they both just really play off of each other. The, the coach Pittman will say something and then coach Mateos will say something off of it or vice versa. Uh, it's just a really great situation and it, it allows us to be extremely, extremely knowledgeable in everything. You, you mentioned you were going to go to Georgia and, and I think Josh Braun, the same deal. He was going to go to Georgia, and Sam came here. And then you guys both leave SEC school, circle back to play for Sam. I guess, what, what do you think about that? Do you and Josh ever talk about that? Just what do you think that's, that says about Sam? We honestly, we haven't talked about that. It, it definitely would be a great conversation. It's funny, though, because Josh was my host when I went to Florida. So that, that that's always a, a fun story uh, that I like to tell people because it's – we make fun of him because he's really old. Uh, and, but yeah, it, it's one of those things where it just, he, when you talk with him, even for the first time, you, you remember him, you remember who he is. He has a presence to himself and you just know how great of a person he is. Uh, even outside of football, he's someone that you want to be around. You don't feel, I feel like a lot of coaches, you kind of got to get up tight and you're like all right coach is nearby i gotta be all tight and stiff it's just not like that with, with coach pitt he's someone that you really truly want to be around he's someone that you can go and sit in his office i've gone in his office and talked with him about nothing related to football for an hour two hours and it's just one of those guys where his presence is just fun to be around and you know that when you're going in, into the portal you know how and incredibly intelligent he is with with football and you also know that he's a coach that you want to play for and it's someone that you know you'll rally behind and go to war for and you respect him and, and love him and want to be with him so it's definitely one of those one of those coaches where you just see him and you're like yeah like i can i can play for that guy yeah ask who, who is your host for your recruiting trip here i didn't have a host i came it was weird it was like Everyone had gone home, and there was, like, no one here. So my host was – it really was, like, Coach Mateos. He was, like, my host. Like, he drove me around, and, like, it was – it was unique. And then Eric and the guy, the guy, Lima, we were in here the other day talking about the daps. Um, how, what, what's your take on the daps that you guys do? I think it's I think it's fun. It, it sounds kind of corny, but it really is – it is fun. You know, you, you, at, at the start, you're thinking about it, you're like trying to get the daps. And then over time, it becomes, you know, second nature and you're doing it automatically. And it's just one of those things that brings up the guys around you. Even when you're not trying to, you'd have someone up, you're like, hey, good job. Hey, this, you did good here. And outside of that, it takes your mind off of how tired you are. And instead of standing there and in your head, you're like, oh my God, I'm so tired. You're thinking, all right, let's tap this guy up. Let's tap this guy up. And it allows you to keep your mind clear of negative thoughts. What was your first impression of, of Braun when you met him for that and had that visit? And, uh, and then when you saw him here, what was that interaction like? Like, oh, hey, what, what was that? Yeah, he, oh, I love that guy. We, we call him like the dad of the line. He, he's, 
like that father figure he he does like all these all this stuff for us and if we ever have questions he's nerdy and knows everything uh but that was all that was my first impression because my he was honestly one of my favorite official visits because it was so different we went to a and we went to a coffee shop and played chess that was what we did and i thought that was just the coolest thing because it was different and he knows what he likes and he knows you know if you don't like this then oh well i'm me and i respect that a lot about braun and uh, coming here he loved it because now he can say that he's uh like a hundred percent on guys he's hosted uh everyone that he's hosted has gone to where he's gone and he considers since he's here that makes it a hundred percent because I came here and I didn't get a Florida, but whatever, we'll give it to him and say that it's a hundred percent. But were you surprised when you walked in and said, Oh, hey, I remember you, or was it did you already know he was here? How did that work out? I really I I didn't really think about it. I, I didn't know. I honestly still thought he was at, at Florida. I hadn't really heard much about him. And then I got here and I was like, Wow, that dude seems really familiar. And they're like, Yeah, it's Josh Brown. I was like, Oh my god, that was my host at Florida. And it just took a second to click, but yeah, it was really cool to be able to get to see him again. Great job.